we look at one of the parathyroid uh, gland disorders and today we'll focus on hypoparathyroidism. So this is a rare condition of the parathyroid gland which leads to low production of parathyroid hormone and ultimately we end up having insufficient amount of it. So there are certain things that could cause uh, this low production of parathyroid hormone but the the, the most common cause of uh, hypoparathyroidism is some sort of injury or destruction to the parathyroid gland. So this can be either through a surgical intervention, for example, when they are doing um, when they are doing thyroidectomy or some sort of trauma, or even some radiation therapy that en ends up damaging the uh, parathyroid home parathyroid gland. The other one is autoimmune conditions, which basically production of antibodies that go and kill or destroy the cells in the parathyroid gland. And also genetic disorders. And the classical one here is uh, the George syndrome, which is a um, genetic disorder that has been known to actually lead to uh, hypoparathyroidism. The other things that could also lead to this kind of problem is um, low levels of magnesium, uh, hypomagnesemia. Uh, which in one way or another, it inhibits production of parathyroid uh, hormone leading to low levels of uh, parathyroid uh, hormone. Uh, resistance to parathyroid uh, hormone itself, where the production is okay. However, uh, the areas that um, the hormone is supposed to work on, like the bones and the kidneys, are not responding. So they're a bit resistant. So all this causes um, low levels of parathyroid uh, hormone. But now what is this parathyroid hormone? So let's understand where it is produced from. It is produced from the parathyroid gland, which is basically located at the neck region. And these um, parathyroid glands are normally occur in fours. So they are four bean shaped like um, structures and they're normally located posteriorly to the uh, thyroid gland. So these are the glands that end up producing the parathyroid hormone. And the parathyroid hormone itself regulates basically calcium levels, the serum calcium levels. And what it tries to do, it tries to increase the, the amount of calcium in blood. And it does this by mostly focusing on three areas, the bones by stimulating the osteoclast to basically break down the calcium and this calcium to go back to the blood vessels. The other way is um, enhancing um, reabsorption of calcium from the kidney and preventing it basically from being excreted. So we end up having uh, calcium being brought back to the blood. The other way is that um, parathyroid hormone um, tries to, um, with the help of activation of vitamin D, it increases the, reab the absorption of calcium from the absorption of calcium um, in the gut. But on top of those three ways of regulation of calcium, parathyroid hormone also plays a, a role in um, the level of phosphate. And it does this by basically reducing um, the excretion of the, regulating the excretion of phosphate via the kidney, such that we end up, when we have high levels of um, calcium, um, we'll end up with low levels of phosphate. So basically it also regulates the way phosphate is excreted uh, via the kidney um, in urine. So that is what we know as normal. So what happens in the abnormal? So normally we know that um, low levels of calcium, once they are detected in blood, will have a negative feedback mechanism that is sent and uh, uh, the body is told, the parathyroid gland is told to release uh, parathyroid hormone. So this stimulates the, the bones, the kidney, and also the gut, and we end up having high levels of calcium. So they reinstate the homeostatic state of uh, calcium levels. However, in hypoparathyroidism, this parathyroid hormone is, uh, being, that is being released by the parathyroid gland is not um, of the right amount. Basically, the kidneys, the bones, or even the absorption from the gut is not sufficient. So as a result of this, we end up having hypocalcemia, which is basically low levels of calcium, and then we have high phosphatemia. And this is a result of reabsorption, basically, or conservation of phosphate from our urination. So as you can see from this diagram, when we have low levels of parathyroid um, hormone, or PTH, at the bone level, we'll have um, uh, low levels of resorption, okay? 
So we'll have low levels of resorption, meaning we'll have um, more, more formation of bone than uh, breaking it down. So the, as a result, the serum calcium levels will go down. Okay. Um, in the gut, instead of now activating vitamin D to help in the absorption, it will not do that. And as a result, GI tract absorption reduces. In the kidney, we will have um, reabsorption of the calcium in the kidney. And as a result, we will um, end up, we will have, um, as a result, we will end up having um, low levels of calcium in the kidney because most of the calcium is being lost. Okay, so it is not being reabsorbed as we want. So it is being lost in urine. So the amount of calcium being lost in urine is high. So the amount of calcium remaining, remaining in the blood is low. Okay, so before we see the effects of this, we have to understand the role of calcium basically in the body. So these are just some, but, but calcium and phosphate play a very huge role in um, regulation of body function. So, but some of the most important roles include regulation of muscle contraction. Um, so uh, together with the nerve impulses, so when we have sufficient calcium levels, we will have regulation of the muscle contraction and also nerve impulses. It also plays a part in heart contractility and also coagulation process. We all know that calcium is important for bone formation and teeth, but also uh, in other connective tissues. So what happens when we have low levels of calcium so and high levels of phosphate? We have already alluded to the fact that calcium plays a very big role in the neuromuscular system, basically in the nerves and the muscles. So we will have tetany. No low levels of calcium leads to hyperexcitability, yeah, both of the of the nervous system. So we end up having a lot of um, muscle contraction or hypertonia with tremor and spasmo uh, spasmodic episodes. So this general hypertonia leads to what we call tetany, basically a state of contraction, muscle contraction. Um, this 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 state can actually be tested using uh, some two tests here, uh, what we call the positive the tortious sign and the Schwarzstick sign. So when we have low levels of calcium or hypo, hypo calcemia as a result of hypoparathyroidism, we'll end up having a positive tortious, which is basically characterized by um, wear flexion of the wrist, as you can see here, and the thumbs and metacarpophalangeal joints. And it's as a result of an inflated calf here. So this inflation leads to, it triggers the tetany of the of the hand and you end up having this kind of flexion. So this is what we call a positive tortious sign. Uh, we can also have a Schwarzstick sign. So this one is basically a tapping of the facial muscle and because of the hyperexcitability, you end up having twitching. So that will be a positive Schwarzstick sign. On top of that, we end up having tingling sensation of mostly the mouth and face, and that is parathesia. Other than that, things like heart arrhythmias, remember we have already alluded to the fact that it plays a part in uh, muscle contractility of the heart, heart contractility, but other things that are affected include mus muscle pain or cramps as a result of the muscle involvement, extreme fatigue, but also we'll also have other co connective tissue uh, involvement. Now people will have coarse hair or hair will be falling down and the nails will be brittle or basically easily uh, breaking. And the nervous system is more, mostly will have more changes like the irritability. So how do we diagnose this? Already we have alluded to two signs, Schwarzstick and Trochers. So these are, can be signs that uh, can really help point out us to the right direction. But blood test is the standard, gold standard. Basically, blood tests will uh, show low levels of parathyroid hormone and also calcium levels that are below 8.5 or phosphate levels that are higher than 4.5. And then X-ray or imaging that will show increased density because we're taking calcium from the blood and taking it to the bone because of um, hypoparathyroidism. So management is basically focused on the effects of calcium. And one, one of the most important one, nursing intervention is uh, monitoring the airway because one of the problems that occurs is tetany that ends up affecting the larynx and you have bronchospasms and laryngospasms, which can lead to uh, airway compromise. 
Uh, also issues of diet, we want to increase the amount of calcium, so dietary calcium intake and reducing dietary phosphate. Uh, also initiating seizure precautions, such as um, making sure we have some sort of uh, pro uh, protection if somebody is about to fall or uh, uh, giving a drug such as uh, uh, pentobarbital, which is um, a form of uh, barbiturate, uh, basically in case of neuromuscular irritation or seizures. Uh, in terms of all, also other medical intervention, mostly calcium carbonate will be given and also vitamin D supplements to increase basically the amount of calcium. Uh, if if the calcium levels are very low in the in the in the in the blood, then intravenous calcium might be given, like calcium gluconate. Uh, also, in other cases, um, hormonal replacement of uh, parathyroid hormone might be given, like such as a um, nut para uh, injection, which is uh, one of the commonest um, parathyroid hormone replacement therapies. So thank you so much.